The Wartime Productions Board in 1942 thought it necessary to cut back on fabric consumption, so they enacted regulations on the amount of fabric used for suits. What the hell? This enactment targeted pachucos in particular because of the excess fabric used in their zoot suits. Pachucos boldly chose not to follow these regulations, demonstrating rebellious attitudes and pride in their culture. Pachucos continue to flaunt zoot suits now attained through bootleg tailors. As a result, these flashy zoot suits were seen as unpatriotic by other Americans. This controversial series of events helped shape Pachuco culture, and zoot suits became a symbol of the cultural pride amongst Mexican Americans. And to get a little bit more into this and chat about the history of Pachuco, I have, ladies and gentlemen, Pachuco Sam. How are you, man? All right, man. All right. How's it going? Ah, it's going great. Going great. Thanks for joining the program, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah, let, let's take it all the way back. Um, I kind of would like to take it even back before uh, the Pachuco lifestyle and kind of talk about how uh, Mexican Americans were treated, you know, in this country uh, in the early 1900s, uh, just as bad as, as black people were treated. Um, give me an idea of what you know about the history of, you know, uh, Latinos coming or Mexicans come into this country, or I should say, being uh, the country being taken from them, <laughs> and then coming back and how they were treated. Well, we were here. You know, we've been here since the beginning. Um, we go way back, but you know, the United States wanted to you know, expand from sea to sign and sea, so they took over. Um, and you know, we were already here. I mean, most of the what we consider the, the Southwest it was already ours. I mean, we've been here in Texas, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, California. But yeah, we've been treated bad since the beginning. Um, we've always been wanted to, they've always wanted to extinguish us, to cast us out, per se, like they did the Native Americans and so forth. Um, but yeah, we've got. You know, ever since the United States has occupied, I want to say occupied or settled or whatever they want to call it. Stole. We've had it pretty rough. I mean, they don't, I mean, even today, you know, with the president, I'm not going to get into that. But, you know, even in the 30s, they try to do the same thing. I mean, you know. Yeah. I mean, they they have, out. They, they were hanging Latinos in, in excess ex execution type shits in town. Oh, yeah. like, uh, and, and more than they were doing it to, to white people, obviously. Correct. I mean, even the, the Texas Rangers were created just for that. Explain that. Well, in the, I don't know exactly when it happened. I want to say in the early 1900s or in the mid 1900s, um, the Border Patrol. Well, there wasn't much of a Border Patrol back then, but the United States created this group called the Texas Rangers, which was made up of mostly, you know, KKK members and stuff. So basically what they did was round up and hang either blacks or Mexicans, lynched them, hanged them up, took pictures, made postcards, Damn. and sold them. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, still, they're still around today. The, the Texas Rangers are actually still around today. Yeah. They're like sheriffs now. But that's how he started, actually. But to get rid of the Mexicans, the, the Native Americans, and the Blacks. Mm. Damn. And anybody else who they didn't deemed, you know, white, basically. Yeah. I mean, there were literally signs that said, no Mexicans, no Blacks, no dogs. We were on the, same, we were on the same sign with, with animals. That's, that's crazy. Um, and, and that led to, uh, let's kind of uh, fast forward a little bit to uh, the Pachuco, God damn, sorry, man, I just hit a joint, okay. I apologize, uh, the Pachuco culture, um, and, and it, it's safe to say that the origins of the dress came from the African-American jazz scene, right? Correct. Actually, there's a dispute between Harlem, New York, and Chicago. Okay. So that's who was the first one to create the zoot suit. But the first one recorded in history was an um, African-American gentleman by the name of Harold C. Fox. Mm -hmm. Georgia? Yeah, he was a tailor. Uh, his, his name was Harold C. Fox. Oh, okay. But was that Georgia? The state? Uh, oh, it was Chicago. Okay. Uh, yeah, from Illinois. Okay. 
He was from Chicago. He was a tailor, but he wanted to be um, a musician. So he started traveling to where, you know, jazz was big back then, which was Harlem and New York, mm -hmm. New Jersey areas and stuff. So back then, in the, I want to say late 20s, when jazz was at its height, the musicians wanted to wear like these outrageous costumes. But back then, what was like the prototype, the predecessor to the Zutu was like a oversized tuxedo with a top hat. Mm -hmm. So he saw that, and when, you know, he finished touring with his band, he came back home. Him and his daddy actually owned a tailor shop, and um, he decided he wanted to make a suit. So he basically got the idea from, you know, the, the, from New York. But he's been credited to be the the first man to actually um, tailor a suit to and sell it. He actually it said that he actually sold his first suit in 1938 in Chicago. What does a typical zoot suit attire consist of? Well, it's an exaggeration. Um, it's always been an exaggeration of suit. So he took. You know, the length of it made it longer, the coat's longer, the lapels are wider and bigger. Um, the shoulder pads are exaggerated. They put extra cushion in the shoulder pads. Um, the original zoot suits were actually made of wool. Um, the pants were waistless. They don't have a waistline. Um, the, the belt loops are dropped. This is a drop loop, and they have very deep pleats which they're actually wide. They're like balloon pants, which I think the typical one is like 40 inches wide at the knee, and then it tapers down into a cuff, maybe to six, seven inches, where you can barely put them on. They used to actually call the pants back then drapes, and uh, really tight ones at the bottom, they used to call them ankle cho chokers. Okay. Damn. So the original name for the suit was was drapes hmm. in the East Coast. Okay, I can see and that. then he came up, yeah, he came up with the name Zoot Suit. Because he was a musician, so it kind of rhymes, you know, with the with the jargon from back then, with the with the jazz mm. talk and the hey, Ubana suit. Yeah, it yeah. Like <laughs> it would fit in. yeah. Actually, I don't know how much time we have, but he actually invented. Oh, please the, go. We have thirty. Train. We have about thirty-five minutes, so. Yeah. He actually invented the chain. And there's a story online somewhere. I got to look for it. I read it some years ago. Where, you know, he made the suit and he sold it to this guy, this musician from Harlem. That the other guys, they started liking it. So they started sliding to a store. And a guy came in one day and said, you know what, man? You don't got any accessories? Well, he had, before the guy came in, he was using the restroom. And back then, the commode, the tank sat up high on the pipe. And it had the little thing that you pulled to flush it, right? The little chain. Mm -hmm. So it came off when he pulled it. <laughs> I see where, this, I see where <laughs> so, this is going. Yeah, so he basically he took it and he was going to go get a replacement one when the guy walked in to pick up his suit. So when the guy asked him, do you have any accessories to go with the suit? He took the chain and he tied it from one end to his pants to the other. And that's how the Zootu chain came out. <laughs> and actually, I don't know if you ever seen Zootu Cat with the Tom and Jerry. Dude, of course. As a kid, Tom and Jerry is literally my favorite cartoon. And specifically yeah. because of the music, which led to the jazz so, and the dress. Yeah. So if you watch the cartoon, look at the Zootu chain. It's actually a, 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 a toilet, toilet cleanser <laughs> chain. Yeah. Now I'm a good So that's where they got. Yeah, that's where they got it from. It's actually a true story. That's great, dude. And yeah. and, and if you look at pictures that uh, they're obviously 99 percent of the pictures are in black and white to which would make you think that it, the clothing was like dark and thing but it, from what i understand it, it was very extravagant very bright like bright colors right you wanted to stand out correct so here's the difference between like the pachucos and the zoot suiters mm. from harlem or new york mm -hmm. so the, the, the zoot suits from back then from chicago new york and stuff they were very flamboyant very flashy Mm -hmm. The guys wanted to be, you know, the musicians wanted to stand out. So their costumes on the East Coast are actually more colorful. Ah. 
versus if you look at the zoot suits from the Pachucos, they're a little more conservative, more uh, traditional colors, black, gray, oh, brown, okay. solid colors. Oh, okay. Damn. Okay. Well, let's let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the Sleepy Lagoon murder that led, yes, some would say, would led to the Zoot Suit riots. Talk to me about what you know about the Sleepy Lagoon murder, which is weird because we're literally sitting like three miles away from from what that used to be, and now it's just like a construction zone or something. But talk to me about that. So the Sleepy Lagoon trial. So the tensions have been building up since way before. I mean, and um, I think the real tension started in the 30s during the, you know, when they started um, discriminating against the people that came here, the, the Mexicans basically, um, you know, that they wanted to work here. But in the 30s when the Depression came, obviously we weren't needed. Um, so that generation there in the, in the 1940s were coming up and they already the Mexicans already had animosity. The older people, the older Mexicans, they, they kind of just like sucked it up and you know, you know it is what it is. But not the younger people. The younger people were more rebellious. Uh, most of them actually came from um, from Texas, from uh, West Texas. A lot of their families migrated to Los Angeles to uh, specifically to East Los. East Los from El Paso, um, following the, the Southern Pacific Railroad to find work. They actually traveled in both directions. Um, they, some of them ended up as far as Houston, Louisiana, um, and then, you know, along the, the Southern Pacific. The centers had been building up, and most of these kids were, I guess, rebellious. They wanted to be American, but they quite, couldn't quite be it because they didn't really speak Spanish, they didn't really speak English, they were kind of stuck in the middle. Um, so when these kids would go out, you know, and party or, or, go, or go out and walk, they were confronted with these uh, military guys. The United States built military bases in the neighborhood. And some of these guys weren't even from California. You know, they were from other states and they didn't really belong there. And these kids were used to being in their neighborhoods. Their neighborhoods were their neighborhoods because that's where they were put. That's where they belonged. And some of these sailors would fight with them, you know, because of racism and because some of these sailors would actually try to hit on some of the women. So there had been confrontations going on way before, years before the Zoot Suit Riot. It just happened so that on that night, when, uh, when what was the guy's name, Hank Labus, him and his girlfriend, like you said, went, went down to the Sleepy Lagoon Ravine to, you know, to chill out, you know, to make out or to what, whatever they, they were going to do there. And, and, and the Sleepy Lagoon was a little spot, right, where there was a little, like, makeshift lake or whatever, and there was, it was just, people yeah. would go to barbecue and, you know, whatever, drink, yeah. and mostly Latinos would go, right? It was like a Latino hangout? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was actually, yeah, it was actually on the outskirts. It was over by Downey, I think. It was in uh, Maywood, where we, technically Maywood, it would yeah. be Maywood, yeah. Maywood, yeah. So, you know, it was like, you know, a little uh, getaway site. It was a little watering hole. It wasn't really out in the middle of nowhere. So they went there and they were approached by these other kids from Downey. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand, they were jumped. Downy attack. boys, right? Downy boys, I guess yeah. some would say. Downy boys, yeah. the Downy boys, the Downy gang, um, basically attacked them because they were their rivals. Thirty Eighth Street and Downy had a long history of not getting along. So afterwards, you know, Hank got in his car. They busted up his car pretty bad. They they they, they beat him up in front of his girlfriend, and so I'm, some say that they actually attacked her too. She was also attacked. I'm not sure about that, but these guys, they, uh, Hank went back to get his, his, his homeboys in, from 38, and when they went back to the Sleepy Lagoon, the Downey boys were already gone. 
And the story says that as they were leaving, one of the guys from 38 heard music coming from across the, 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 the ravine, the Sleepy Lagoon. So when the guy said, hey, maybe that's them, they're partying over there. So they went over there, and they were met by the people that lived there, and they were asked to leave. Because the people that lived there actually mistaken them for the for the Downey boys, because the Downey boys were actually at that party earlier causing trouble. They had gotten to some kind of fight. And um, from my understanding is they got into it, and when they left, um, uh, somebody was left behind, which was uh, Jose Diaz. The body was Jose Diaz. Was discovered the next day, stabbed up. And, you know, being in wartime and the propaganda and all that stuff with communism and stuff, the media just ate it up. Usually they wouldn't have made a big deal about, you know, Mexicans killing each other or blacks killing each other, but they took the story and they ran with it. And they labeled um, Hank the, the villain, the leader of 38th Street, mm. you know, which was never really proven, to, the, to be honest. And they arrested a bunch of kids, right, who ended up spending, like, years in, in big-time prisons. Yeah, they actually rounded up Filipinos, blacks, Everybody that was wearing a zoot suit, mm -hmm. they didn't really. I mean, their main target was the Mexicans, mm -hmm. but they went around and they swept everybody up, everybody they could, even even white kids, even the white head tech kids, mm. got dragged up. Ah, so the white kids whose zoot suits were they were the head cats. I've heard that term before. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah, they were the head cats. Uh, you mentioned Filipinos. Mm -hmm. um, I did come across some history with the Filipino and the zoot suit that, that was closely related also, right? Yeah. yeah the, zoot, the, the Filipinos, they, uh, them, and uh, along with the Japanese, believe it or not, they embraced really? that style oh. in California. Interesting. The Japanese actually still have, um, if you uh, if you look, if you go on Facebook, they actually have uh, big, big clubs out there that do the lowrider thing and I've the, seen that. the jutsu thing. They, they, yeah. They've embraced the uh, Latino and Chicano culture big time oh, to yeah. where these Japanese chicks look like, you know, Brenda from down the block that I grew up in, with in Bell Gardens. <laughs> it's exactly. crazy. Yeah. I mean, I've, 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 I mean, off the record, I mean, off, uh, after we get off from here, I, I have actually some pictures of Japanese guys in zoot suits and stuff and uh, the girls too. And I want, I'd like to send them to you so you can check them out. That's dope. Hell yeah, I want to check that out. But yeah, go, go ahead and continue uh, about how they rounded up, uh, you know, the kids and and what that led to. Well, you know, they accused um, the whole 38 group. They let all the rest of them go. I mean, um, but there was um, I smell like a... Hank and his, and his homeboys, I guess they, uh, oh, no. they charged them with conspiracy. And they wanted to throw the book at them. I, um... Basically, and, and, and closed the case, but Hank being Hank, he wanted to fight it, you know. And he, you know, he swore up and down up until the day, you know, that he passed that he had nothing to do with it. So when they went to court, the, the, the judge and everybody there, the district attorney, they were all racist. Mm -hmm. And, um, they came up with all kinds of stuff. They didn't, they wouldn't let them bathe. They wouldn't let them brush their hair. Yeah. They wouldn't let them change their clothes. They called them, um, you know, thugs. And, and you know, saying that, that it, it was in their DNA to be murderers. Mm. Damn, that's because so of the Aztec blood that runs in them or something like that. That's nuts to me, man. It's crazy because yeah. you're, you're probably familiar with this also. This is just a bit off topic and we'll jump back on. But a lot of the, the, the uh, drug laws that are in place to this day were put in place because of Mexicans coming, you know, to California and working and things like that and bringing this crazy weed, this crazy tobacco that's going to make you jump out of the window and rape white women. I mean, a lot of yeah. these, yeah, a lot of, and it was propaganda. So, like you said, it, it 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 put a fear in white people, dude. And they were they were putting these kids on camera and taking pictures of them and putting them on the front of newspapers. And they're all dirty and disheveled. And and, and America's looking at this like, see, I knew it. These these Mexicans need to go back home. I want I want to ask you a question. The yes, the opening scene of American Me, 
where you know the the pachuco is walking down the street with this chick and there's some sailors and then they end up you know um getting into it rumbling is that pretty accurate to how the uh, the uh <clears throat> excuse me the zutsu riot started yes it's actually um Edward James almost actually got that down to the tee. Um, that's how it started. The the rumbles between the, the Pachucos and the Sailors have been going on. It just happened to boil over on that day. That's exactly what happened. Um, because uh, the Sailors have been attacked by a gang of Pachucos. Is that how and, it started? Started yeah. like that was it? That was the that can be the fuse that was lit or whatever. Yeah. Okay. They actually got they got one up on the sailors. Okay. Because what the what the Pachuco started doing since they were outnumbered by the sailors, different gangs, different neighborhoods started um you know, getting together and fighting against them. They started knifing them, um, attacking them. Um so they there was tensions on both sides, there was egging on from both sides. Mm. They were both both sides were egging on for confrontation. Basically, it just happened so that the the, the 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 that one time that they got over on the sailors, the sailors had had enough. They want to go, you know, and, and basically get revenge. So they went to get some of their sailor homies. Oh yeah, they got the, it was the sailors. It was the police. It was oh, the, and, damn, the police uh, were whooping ass too. I mean, no, no surprise, yeah. but. Yeah. yeah, and a bunch of uh, uh, people, I guess citizens, mm -hmm. if you want to call them that. Yeah, you know, um, joined in. So they started in downtown, LA. Mm -hmm. So as the fighting continued, they that actually started getting more people, more people, more people, more people, to the point where they started going into the barrios. They started going in Chavez Ravine and stuff, Boyle Heights, mm -hmm. looking for Mexicans. Or anybody else. I mean, they they were looking for Mexicans and Zutsus, but if you were black, you were fair game. If you were Filipino, you were fair game. Yeah. If you were wearing a Zoot suit, you know, you were fair, fair game. They were looking for Mexicans and Zutsus, but if you were black, you were fair game. If you were Filipino, you were fair game. Yeah. If you were wearing a Zoot suit, you know, you were fair, fair game. And was yes, how sir. how big was was this thing? I mean, because what I understand it was like LA was a like a war zone in certain pockets. Yeah, it was pretty big. It was thousands of people. I mean, yeah. thousands of people. There were ships that were landing in California with more people that wanted to join the fight. Mm. Yeah, you know, um, a lot of people got hurt. A lot of they don't tell you this. In any of the books, but Edward James almost, mm -hmm. you know, the scene where the women get raped. Yeah. There was a lot of that that went on. And, you know, of course, they're not going to tell you about that. Damn. Um, you know, they made it seem like it was just a brawl and, you know, and it was something that came and went and it was done with. And the, the heroes of the day were the servicemen. Mm. Damn, dude. I mean... It got to the point where they actually, like you said, they they none of the none of the sailors or policemen or or, or, or citizens that, that that attacked people were ever convicted. They were let go basically, and then and, and the tail insult, you know, to injuries. They banned the zoot suit. You couldn't walk around L.A. in a zoot suit without getting fined and jail time. That's crazy. There's another law that was put in place to target a specific people. Well, yes. I mean, it would be like saying, hey, you can't wear skinny jeans today or something, you know, get yeah. a fine for it. Yeah. Um, That's nuts, dude. And and this all, uh, I guess, how long did, because there is a, obviously a, a subculture of it now, or there's a, still a culture of it, people keeping it alive today, and it's alive and well through social media and, and different groups out there but it was it would was seen as a fad right how, how long would you say the, the did it end shortly after that was it just like all right this is done we're moving on to something else in certain pockets yes it died off you know 
in certain places it did it. I mean, for the most part, it did die off, and as people, you know, in the fifties, the style, the style of the dress changed. It was the more more the fifties look, the more the jeans, you know, the khakis with the white T-shirt, the Chuck Taylors. Uh, but in some places like El Paso, uh, in Mexico, it never really died. Because actually, that's where it started. The Pachuco started in Ciudad Juarez and El Paso on the borderline, um, and they go back to as far as 1915, 1910. And, and back and then they were. A, mm -hmm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you continue, please. I have. I'll wait. Yeah. Yeah. No, it started way back when, you know. And back then they were called Tiri. It's actually the people from California that started calling them Pachucos. Because when they were asked where you're from, they would say, well, we're from Chuco, which is El Paso. Uh -huh. And they they would ask, well, we, we know, we're, we're from Pachuco. We're, we're going to, vamos Pachuco. We're going to Chuco. We're going to El Paso. Uh -huh. That's what, uh, actually, literally, that's what Pachuco means, a resident of El Paso. <laughs> That's dope. And what's what's more, even more dope to me because I love music. Music is my favorite thing in, on the planet. Um, okay. Next, next to, um, well, we won't get into that. Um, <laughs> but I, I <laughs> do find it very interesting how in El Paso, or how did they pick up jazz and that influence? Were they bumping jazz like that in El Paso, or did that come from Mexico? Or w explain that aspect. A lot, a lot of people from here from from Texas. Um, especially here in Houston, we're so close to to Louisiana. Ah, makes you know, sense. Yeah, we you know we travel back and forth because of, like uh, like I said, because of the Southern Pacific. Mm -hmm. Back then, that's how we're tied in together. That's how Texas and California and all that stuff are tied in together. That's how uh, all, that's like because back then that was work. It was uh, the rail the railways, you know. Um, so. You know, the, the Texas, the Texas Pachucos were mostly into, I want to say, Tejano, Zadico, whatever music was around. But when he, you know, when he started in the, in the 1940s when jazz came along, the guys just picked up the style. The Zuzi was, um, I guess, the style back then, just like, I would say, um, what's the style now? Like Skinny jeans, jeans like you Levi said earlier. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's, that was just the style of back then that they picked up, you know? Yeah. The Pachucos were actually around. They they predate the Zutsu, basically. Okay. Did that... It goes... It goes go ahead. Huh? Go I'm ahead. Sorry. No, no, you go for it. Go. No, I was just going to say it predates. It goes way back. I mean, it goes way back. I, I mean, we'd be here forever talking about how far back it goes. <laughs> yeah. Did that kind of... Because I, I guess if... I grew up in the 80s and 90s, and bag, baggy was the look, you know, especially in East L.A. with the real baggy jeans, and then you cuff them at the yeah. bottom. Would you say that bled into the, the I guess, uh, L.A., East L.A. culture, or Cholo culture, or whatever the case may be? Yeah, it actually did. It actually did. I mean, it, it, it definitely did. I mean, the, the kids from L.A. picked it up, and they ran with it, and they represented it to the fullest. I mean... You know what? Even if I may, a lot of the women, specifically with the makeup, I, I, I've seen very up-close pictures of how they did the makeup back then, and, and the pachucas. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at, like, let's say a 1978 Chola, it was, like, the same type of very, like, ex very extravagant, you know, type of makeup with the with the silver underneath the eyes or all around the eyes, and then the black coming out, and it yeah. was very, very close to that. The, the, the hairstyles haven't changed most. That uh, too. Either. Yeah. I mean, the the, the women, the, the, as far as the way the women dress, I mean, the, the, the cholas now and the pachucas, it's, it's the same. They're just actually, they're the same, in, you know, they're the same people. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're the um, descendants of yeah. pachucas. Yeah. Damn, yeah. dude. That's dope, man. I, I really appreciate you coming on the show and, and sharing the history about this um, very very interesting stuff uh, do you have anything you want to plug no i'm fine i mean i'm good um i like that you know, you're the first you. you're one of the first people ever to 
have nothing to plug and i just appreciate you just taking your time out to to come and hang out and uh, hopefully we can talk in the future and i'll definitely stay close in touch with you and and i'd love to um you know hang uh, talk with you in the future as well and maybe have a part two all right guys cool man yeah perfect man well hey i'll talk to you soon and then uh you have a great night thank you thank you man